Hey guys, it's Graham. I hope you're all doing well. Today's video will be a combination of two different parts. There's going to be the shopping, lifestyle content that a lot of you guys enjoy. And then there's also going to be the sort of product look and product review, talking about something in depth. In this case, it's going to be two pairs of Jacques Marie Maj sunglasses that I've been wearing a lot this summer. One of them is a very recent pickup, and one of them is something that I've had for a couple months. Now, if you guys enjoy the video, and you're just finding me for the first time, a subscription would mean the world. I know a lot of you guys are unsubscribed that are watching me, so if you subscribe, it would help me so much to grow as a channel. And if you are subscribed and you enjoyed today's video, please make sure and drop a like below as it helps spread my videos to as many people as possible. So getting into the first pair of glasses, I will be talking about my pair of Jeffs, which you probably saw in my last video. Now the Jeff comes in this hard shell case, you can see the microfiber cloth there, 
This was just included by the store that I bought them from. I do not take the actual Jacques Marie Maj cleaning wipes out of the case. I think it like damages resale value or something, I don't know. But they're also just cumbersome. This works a lot better, so it's a pretty simple case. I think it's like the Batwing case or like Mammoth case. They have some name for it, but you have a nice Jacques Marie Maj logo embossed here on the case. And I just leave, you know, microfiber cloth in there, the glasses go there. Now, the glasses themselves are made out of an acetate and wire combination. The acetate is hand carved in Japan. Now, most frames that you like, whether they are from LVMH or Caring Group companies, are going to be made by a machine and carved that way and often not using acetate construction. In Jacques Marie Maj's case, like many other niche sunglass brands, they are hand carved in Japan using acetate and a wire frame sort of as the skeleton of that acetate. In my case, there is a golden frame underneath that you can see in the light all the way back here that goes around the glasses and even adds this nice art deco sort of inspired embellishment inside. And then we have the golden arrowheads in the front of the glasses and the same pattern going around. And then the acetate itself uses this agar colorway, which is really Jacques Marie Maj's take on tortoise shell. And what I love about these glasses is that they are pretty opaque in terms of in dark lighting, they look just like black glasses for the most part. And when you walk into the light, they have this beautiful tortoise shell shine to them that really just brings out the beauty in the glasses. Not to just keep saying beauty, but... Now, why did I buy the Jeff? I bought the Jeff because as you can see, it's a Wayfair-styled sunglass. But unlike other Jacques Marie Maj silhouettes, whether it's the Dylan, the Enzo, or the Torino, those glasses tend to be extremely oversized. And they might not look like it online, but if you try them on, whether it's the cat wing or the boxiness of it, they take up a ton of your face. And that was something that I had to discover in person as I didn't really see that online. But when I tried these on, I just loved the fit of them. And the tortoise shell was the other piece of the puzzle that I was looking for. So that combination is what sold me on the glasses. I knew that I wanted something from Jacques Marie Maj due to the construction method of it, but the actual fit, as like any sunglasses should, like the fit is what really made me choose them. The Jeff is part of the Circa collection, which is sort of like a timeless entry into the Jacques Marie Maj ecosystem where they take some old frames, old silhouettes, and rejuvenate them and give them a new spin, and they will be sort of a consistent part of Jacques Marie Maj for the future. But in this case, the Jeff is done in collaboration with Jeff Goldblum. And one of the things that I love about this collaboration is that it doesn't feel like merch. It doesn't feel like, you know, Travis Scott, Cactus Jack concert merch. I feel like Jacques Marie Maj and Jeff Goldblum took a pair of glasses and just genuinely made something special out of them that doesn't require big branding on the outside or anything like that to sell the collaboration. The collaboration's a good collaboration because it just accomplishes the task of good design on its own with no need to use Jeff Goldblum's name as an embellishment to sell the product. Now speaking about the limited nature of these glasses, the frame itself is not limited. What gets limited is the accent and color combo. So this gold and agar combination probably won't get made again, or it will get made again and they use different color lenses on it. That's sort of the way that Jacques Marie Maj differentiates each limited edition. It's not that the Jeff will get retired and never get made again. I will say that they feel heavy on the nose and the ears after a couple hours of wearing. For like the normal average time that someone wears a pair of sunglasses, I have no qualms about it. I think that they are great and I cannot recommend them enough. 
Now for the second pair of glasses, I purchased the Hatfield in a hickory frame with seafoam lens combination. And instantly what drew me to these glasses was that color combo. The lightness of it is exactly what I was going for and I thought that it would fill in all the gaps that the Jeff didn't fill. Looking at the frame, it's a bit different as we have a teardrop style lens with a Wayfair sort of arrowhead accents on either side. So you have this hybrid of Wayfair and Aviator. On my face, I think they create a much more unique shape than the Jeff does and that was another thing that drew me to the glasses as I didn't want to be in a position where I had two different flavors of the same thing. I wanted to sort of experiment and get a more Jacques Marie Maj-esque eccentric pair of glasses and I didn't think that I wanted that at first but once I tried these on I just sort of became obsessed with doing that and I sort of molded over for four days and bit the bullet. Now this pair, the Hatfields, is one of Jacques Marie Maj's first silhouettes that they made, one of the first four, and this is just a new colorway iteration of it. My pair is number 251 out of 350, so there's only 350 versions in the world of this hickory with seafoam lens and silver trim. Now, I went out on a limb with these, as I said, but every single time I look at them in the light, I am just in love with them. They look stunning in the bright light. The acetate just shines so beautifully in that light. Now, I have the Garrett Light sunglasses, which are black, and so nothing really filled in that lighter sort of color palette in terms of sunglasses. And beyond that, I also just felt like I was downgrading whenever I wore the Garrett Light sunglasses because the Jeffs feel so nice to wear and they just exude a sort of confidence that I think is hard to find in other sunglasses. But these, of course, do that too remarkably. Now, the Hatfield has a whole sort of Western shtick to it that I didn't really know before buying it but I also don't know where the namesake itself specifically comes from, so if you know that, drop it below in the comments. Speaking about the sizing, these are technically smaller than the Jeffs in being a 48-23, which refers to sort of the lens size and the nose bridge gap, and the Jeffs, I think, are a 51-22. So looking at the case of the Hatfields, it's a bit different than the Jeff in that it is made out of a vegetable tanned leather with this sort of satin inside. I'm quite happy that it came with this case rather than the hard one as my mom owns a pair of Jacques Marimage, surprisingly, and she has the hoppers and they came in a case like this and four years later the case just looks absolutely amazing and sort of the patina that the raw leather has developed. The case itself is handmade in Italy and like the hard shell case it also has the logo embossed on it. Along the note of my mom having a pair I sort of wanted to talk about my introduction to the brand. So in 2019 I bought that pair of... So in 2019 I went sunglass shopping with my mom as our family has just genetically really sensitive eyes that are prone to a lot of sort of like health issues and stuff down the line and a great way to prevent a lot of that is by wearing eye protection. So in that day of shopping I sort of picked out my pair of Garrett Light glasses which I now have and still wear and my mom found a pair of hoppers from Jacques Marie Maj that she really liked and she just picked them out unknowingly, not knowing the price, not knowing anything about the brand. She just liked the frame a lot and liked how they looked and somehow she sort of sold herself on them and bought them. Um, and while I understand that the brand is extremely expensive, you have to consider that we are talking about protection to you know, keep someone from potentially going blind down the road um, or having cataracts or like any of those other awful eye issues that you encounter in old age. And so I think that that is a priceless um, sort of thing to protect yourself from. And 
yeah, she got the hoppers in 2019 and has worn them ever since and they've held up great in terms of the durability, the quality. It's not like they get all dirty and gross after four years. No, they look just as good as they did the first day that she purchased them. And I think that that is incredibly useful for a pair of sunglasses that are as expensive as Jacques Marie Maj. Hopefully down the road I can sort of show you that pair, the box that goes with it and stuff, as that's like a unique collaboration as well. And I just think that the packaging is part of like the intrigue and the mystery to Jacques Marie Maj. Now let's talk about the big elephant in the room with Jacques Marie Maj, which is price. Undoubtedly, you are paying for something to be handmade ethically with high quality materials, and that's where part of the price comes from. Another part of the price, obviously, is the limited appeal to it, which personally didn't influence price for me, but I'm sure they have that baked in somehow. Um, and I'm sure a lot of other consumers justify that in the price. For me, what really sells it is just the value that you can get back from these glasses if you ever outgrow them. When you outgrow a pair of Ray-Bans, I would assume that they lose like 90% of their value, if not like, somewhere in the range of like 60 to 80 percent. With Jacques Marie Maj, let's say you have a pair of glasses for 800, the lowest I ever see these frames sell for is high 500s to mid 500s. Most of them sell for 600s used. Obviously you don't want to get them scratched up in the lens or anything like that, but I think with a nice pair of sunglasses, you're probably more likely to be paying close attention and taking good care of them anyways, so not egregiously damaging them shouldn't be uh, too difficult. And that's ultimately like what made me comfortable enough to buy them not once, but twice at retail cost. I think that, you know, it's great if you wanna buy used sunglasses, you really have to know how they'll fit your head. You have to make sure that the seller isn't being shady and selling you a pair of like scratched up frames. Uh, and so that could be a great alternative to affording Jacques Marie Maj, but personally to buy them at full price and take up to like a $200 loss isn't a big deal to me, simply because if I bought a pair of Ray-Bans for $200 and took a 100% loss on them, it would be the same amount of money not in my wallet anymore. And with that being said, I think that this isn't necessarily a video to tell you run to your nearest luxury optical store and buy a pair. But do know that if you're thinking about them, I really don't see how you can go wrong with them. Um, if you're looking at other luxury sunglass options especially, I think that Jacques Marie Maj definitely has the strongest cult following in terms of like resellability. Um, I know people love all different types of eyewear, but if you like just go on to Grailed and see what sells, people love Jacques Marie Maj and they have a really dedicated fan base that sort of loves to keep trying new silhouettes and stuff. And I think some of the other brands might be a little too niche to have that sort of resale market that Jacques Marie Maj has. Um, that's another thing. I think that the brand comes off as pretentious in some ways because of the price, even just the name, like it's such a mouthful, it's easier to say JMM. And that was definitely an apprehension for me before buying, but once I tried them on and just sort of got the feel for them and all of that, it wasn't even like a salesperson had to be using these words to make me think that I was buying something premium. They just felt amazing. And it's sort of the same way I feel with like Visvim products. It's just sort of like once you handle it and you learn a bit about what they do and you're able to see that reflected, like for example, the acetate on this side of my frames literally has a mark still from where the Dremel was or at least where it was getting sanded down. Those fingerprints of, of human craftsmanship are just amazing to me. I also think that for a lot of people that live in like hotter places, maybe you don't get to have all the fun with like layering for example or like outerwear. And I really think that sunglasses is like a great way to explore like spicing up or like enhancing your wardrobe in a different way that's way more useful if you live in like Florida, Arizona, like southern US, 
being able to experiment just a little bit and dip my foot in the water with these frames is really fun and exciting and I don't really think I'll go much beyond what I've done but I'm really happy to like sort of be a part of it I guess. Thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate the support that you always give me on my videos whether you are subscribed, unsubscribed, every view is just it means the world to me and as I see myself as sort of like an education channel in terms of like trying to teach people more about the stuff that interests me and so whenever someone new watches a video of mine it makes me really happy to be able to share my passion with you, the audience, and as I said before, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe. If not, leave a comment why you didn't like it and I'll try and work on that in the future. If you have video ideas, I would love to hear them. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.